Okay. Yeah. And, and so the third part is that uh, it's much harder to build aligned, powerful, and relevant uh, agentic AI system than misaligned. Um, so what are, how do you define misaligned behavior from AI systems? Uh, misaligned behavior, as I define it, is uh, unintended behavior that emerges from uh, problems with the system's objectives in particular. So, so the contrast here is sort of there's unintended behavior that in, emerges from, from the kind of capabilities of a system um, where it kind of can't behave as you intend. And then align, misalignment, though, is, is not that. Misalignment is when the problem is that it, it's sort of not trying. It could behave as you, as you intend, but it's not trying. It's trying to do something else. So you know, if, you have a, if you have an employee and they, let's say, they, they give a bad presentation to the board of your, your org, um, but they were trying to, to make as good of a presentation as they can, and they're just not very good at, at presentations, then that's a capabilities failure. Whereas if you have an employee who's stealing money from your company, um, then that's a, an alignment failure. They're sort of trying to do something you don't, you don't want them to do. Why is it difficult, so difficult actually, to align uh, powerful AI? So I should say, I don't, I don't think we know yet exactly how difficult it will be. It's a sort of open scientific question and we and we haven't you know had to really be in the trenches with this this problem yet and i think a lot of what we should be doing is sort of gathering data about which parts of this are difficult i do think though there's a sort of plausible enough story that this this will be difficult and, and i can say a, f a few things about that so so one is just right now um we don't have we don't know how to build uh or control or understand the kind of motivations specifically of the systems that we create. So, so the way we, we, we select our, our AI systems almost entirely on their kind of external behavior and their performance on um, th their sort of specific, uh, you know, types of tasks we give to the systems. And we, and we, uh, we sort of churn through tweaking the weights until we get um, a system that performs well on, on the tasks that we set. So we, we know that it has that, that property. Um, its behavior has the property that it will perform in blah way on blah data set. That's kind of, to a first approximation, like all we know, um, or, you know, we know we, we, there's, there's some, some more, but we're not at a point where we can, for example, like look inside the system and be like, here's where it's, it's motivations are. We're not at a point where we can decide what we want its motivations to be and sort of deliberately implant them. Um, all we're doing is sort of, uh, growing or evolving or somehow kind of pulling out of the ether, a sort of specific set, a specific computer program that has a specific specific property in its, in its external behavior, where that behavior is unfortunately compatible with all sorts of possible motivational structures and goals and stuff like that. So, so, so at a basic level, we're just not at a point of like kind of knowing how to do this, um, like knowing how to kind of exert fine grained control over uh, the, the motivations of our AIs to check, to check that that exertion has been successful that's just not where we're at. And unfortunately, the thing where we are at looks like it's going to be sufficient, uh, in my opinion, or sort of a version of it to, to get kind of very, very far in terms of capabilities for our systems. Um, so, you know, kind of all you need to know that your system is capable, you, you know, is to sort of design a, a task. Uh, and eventually, you know, the external behavior will be enough to verify that it's capable of doing the thing. Because if it did the thing, then you know it's capable of doing it. Um, and so we can really churn out systems that are really quite capable using these sort of black box techniques that we currently have, but, but it, it sort of knowing, understanding the system and knowing what its motivations are and being able to sort of exert more fine grained control over those, we are not there yet. Um, and it's not clear we'll get there by the time we're, we're able to do, to do the really powerful thing. So that's the sort of basic situation. I think there's a few other, a few other reasons for concern. One is like, even if we knew that we, even if we could implant this, like we knew what the system's objectives were and we could control them. I think there is still an additional question of specifying in the right way what we actually want the system to do, especially when it's um, engaging in behavior that we can't fully understand, or, or it's going to go out and kind of, um, in some sense, exert a lot of power in, in pursuit of the, of the objectives we specify. Um, I, you know, I, I think that's a less important problem than, than the first thing. I think a lot of the, a lot of the meat is just like, can you aim the system at all? Can you get, can you control the, control the objectives at all? Um, but there's still a question after that of, of selecting the right objectives. There's an additional problem, which is that these systems are, um, unlike a lot of sort of sorts of technology like planes and, and, uh, and you know, software and all sorts of things, I, I think basically unlike every form of technology is th there's a potential for the system to be kind of actively adversarial 
in in relation to your efforts to to make it safe or aligned. So um, if you end up with a system that is uh, for whatever reason has problematic goals or they're kind of the wrong objectives, but um, appearing more benign to you would be advantageous to it, then uh, you you have this problem where there's an incentive to kind of deceive you or to kind of mess with the training process. And and just in general, you're dealing with the, at a certain point you're dealing with a system that's just sort of a lot smarter than you and. So it's going to be very hard to understand. Even if in some level you understand the mechanics, you're not going to understand its thinking all the way. You're dealing with this sort of like something that's quite alien, superior to your intelligence and uh, possibly adversarial. And that, so that's quite scary. And then the final piece is that I think the sort of stakes of error are uniquely high. So you don't, you don't get the sort of trial and error dynamic uh, to the extent, same extent you might want in, in other contexts. So like if a plane, if a plane crashes, like we had a lot of plane crashes on the way to uh, kind of making planes pretty safe. We can have sort of the equivalent of plane crashes with sort of suitably weak AI systems, but there's a certain, a certain level of capability where once, if you, if you mess up on that capability, it's a little more like, it's more like you released a bioweapon um, and, and that now the bioweapon is like out there in the world and it's spreading. And then in this case, it's not just sort of passively spreading by a kind of biological reproduction. It's actually actively trying to spread and to subvert your, your efforts to kind of stop it and doing so with sort of more intelligence than humans. Um, and that's just, that's a really scary fail. Like, you know, we, if you think about like the level of security, the level, the sort of tolerance for trial and error we should have with, with sort of a lab that was working with a, a virus that could, could kill 99% of humanity if it, if it got released like that, that, you know, we have these like labs right now, BSL four labs or whatever is sort of the top C and they're bad. Like in terms of how well we can actually contain that we're, that we're like not near the level of, of safety. I think we would need to actually work with like a, a genuinely doomsday virus. And, um, and so I think there's a concern that the AI suitably powerful AI is going to be like that. You kind of, you, there, the sort of, you don't have a lot of room for like, oops, we messed up. Um, try again. It's sort of, if you mess up at a certain level, then, uh, it's game over.